Hey everyone, this is Brian, and in this video we're going to install Qt open source on Windows 10 in four simple steps. The first step is extremely simple. We're just going to download the installer. Go to qt.io, click on Download Try By, and scroll down to Downloads for Open Source Users. You may be intimidated by this by Qt. Don't worry, you're not getting some kneecapped version. This is the full version of Qt. It's specifically designed for open source users. Now, you do get extra offers and features with the commercial version. However, Qt has a dual licensing model, so you can either buy the commercial version or contribute to the open source community. And to dispel some myths, yes, you can create, distribute, and even sell open source software created with Qt as long as you follow the licensing guidelines. I'm not an expert, so please refer to the documentation. Click on the Go Open Source button, scroll all the way down, and click Download the Qt Online Installer. This is an online installer, so you will need to be connected to the internet while you download and install. Scroll down and click the Download button. If your download does not start automatically, you may have to right-click and save as. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to save as, and I'm going to save the installer. Some browsers may not trust this because it's an executable, but I can assure you it's 100% safe. So I'm going to click keep. Once your download is finished, you're ready to move on to the next step. The next step, we're going to run the installer, choose our packages and components. So we're going to minimize this. Go to wherever you save the installer and double click it. The online installer will begin and you can simply click next. You will need a valid Qt account, but fear not, this is not a paid account. It's absolutely free and it takes just seconds to sign up. So if you don't have an account, go ahead and sign up. If you do have an account, enter your login credentials. Click next. Go ahead and accept the license agreements. Now we can begin the setup. After a few short moments, it will download all the information from the remote repository. There is a lot of it to choose from, and we're going to be presented with some options. The first option is, do you want to help include usage information? I'm going to say disabled for this example, but you will choose the option that's best for you. Next, you need to choose an installation folder. Try to keep this short. You may have to access this from the command line. This is the part where a lot of people get confused. There are a lot of options to choose from. By default, Qt Creator is already selected. Qt Creator is the IDE you're going to use to create programs. Along with that is the debugger and the debugging tools. You don't really need a whole lot more, but if you're so inclined, you can choose some different options here. Right off the bat, you see this is going to occupy 400 megs of space. That's quite a bit, especially if you're on a low internet connection. And if you were to simply go to the newest version of Qt and say, click, I want everything, you're suddenly shocked to see it is a 50 gig download. Don't worry, you don't need all of this. So uncheck that, go into the specific package, and we're gonna choose some components here. First off, unless you have Microsoft Visual Studio, you don't need the MSVCs. You do, however, need the Ming W or the min GWs. This is an independent compiler which will allow us to work without Microsoft tools. So we simply want those and you don't need the rest of this. In case you're curious what these are, most of them will give you some sort of description but you may have to Google it. But for example, Android, you're not going to start off with Android if you're just learning Qt, but adding it would add a lot of, well, extra download that we don't really need. That's another 600 megs. 
Because this is open source, you can actually download the source code, but it is an additional 2.5 gigs. Most of you just starting off will not need the source code. Don't stress too much over which options you need. You can always go back and reinstall components later on. At a minimum, what you're going to need is, well, the development tools, namely Qt Creator, which is selected by default. I would go ahead and put in MinGW and go into the specific version of Qt you want and select MinGW as well. I'm doing the 32 and the 64 bit, but you probably won't need both. Click next and you'll have to accept some license agreements. Choose a start menu shortcut and you're ready to install. My installation is only going to take three gigs of space. That is actually fairly small compared to the 50 we were going to do before. Okay, step three is dead simple. We're just gonna click install and sit back and wait. If you have a slower internet connection, this could take a while. If you're curious what's going on, you can click show details and you can hide the details. I'm gonna pause this video and let it go ahead and do its thing. Okay, once you get to this screen, we are fully installed. If this little checkbox here is checked, it will launch Qt Creator the IDE. Go ahead and leave that check and click finish. And we're ready to move on to the next step as soon as this loads up. Ta-da! The last step here is to test our installation, make sure everything works the way we would expect it to work, and that we can actually run applications. I could bore you with a lot of Hello World stuff, however, just click on the Examples tab, and there is an ocean of examples out there. Some of these are just downright cool. For example, we could do the cute 3D planets. You're going to get some weird looking window like this. This is the documentation over here. And you have to configure a project. Remember, I told you we're going to use the MinGW. We're going to do 32 or 64. For this example, we're going to do 32 bit. This is called a kit. It's going to define how this thing's going to run. Just leave it as the default, configure, and you have a beautiful QML application set up and ready to go for you to play around with. And let's go ahead and run this. We can check the build status and voila. Sometimes Windows likes to help us out, just allow access. And our example is running, running as expected. Welcome to the land of QML. The first thing you'll notice once you're in Qt is that it's big, and I mean really big and really complex, and there is a lot to learn, way more than we can cover in this small little video. So where do you go to get more help? Everything in Qt has integrated help. If you select an item and press F1, it will bring up the item. Also, you can go to the welcome area, and there is an examples tab, and there are examples for just about everything. And this is built right into Qt Creator. No extra downloading needed. You can find 3D examples, full video games, you name it, it's there. And there are built-in tutorials. Some of these are, well, exactly what you're looking for, and some of them are not even close to what you're looking for. So when in doubt, you can also go out to other outside sources. For example, my YouTube channel. I have 70,000 subscribers, hundreds, and I mean, literally hundreds of videos on Qt. I even have an entire playlist for it. And we have the Void Realms Facebook group. There are 4,000 plus people in this group and most of us know Qt and we love talking about it and teaching people. If that wasn't enough, if you need a little bit of extra help, I do teach Qt professionally out on udemy.com. Simply look for my name, Brian Cairns, or search for something like Qt Core for Beginners and that is your entry point. I cover from beginners all the way through intermediate and advanced. Hope to see you there.